Hello students, welcome to the lecture on transportation of oil, gas and products and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the basic configuration of pipeline, explain supervisory control and data acquisition SCADA, discuss on intelligent pigging, understand the transportation of oil and gas by road, a railway and marine tankers. Let's start with the concept of transportation of oil, gas and products. This is the time of the first commercially drilled oil operation in the 1800s. Oil has become a resource of astronomical importance to the modern society of the United States. Along with the soaring demand for oil arrived the need for an efficient means of storing and transporting this valuable resource to the homes and industrial facilities which use it for energy and the production of a multitude of consumer products. Today, oil is discovered and produced from the earth in large quantities by companies such as Western Pipeline Corporation and transported to refineries where it is treated and transported once again to residential and industrial consumer. Oil may be transported for thousands of miles by pipeline, truck, tanker, barge, train or a combination of these means before it reaches its final destination. The transportation of oil is a highly specialized operation which requires meticulous coordination among the various levels of the supply chain. Millions of barrels of oil and millions of cubic feet of natural gas are pumped each day. But there are thousands of miles between the wellheads and where the oil and natural gas must go. Transporting enough oil and natural gas across the globe to meet the daily demand is an epic undertaking. And at each step, technology is there. On the sea, where mammoth crude oil tankers as long as the Eiffel Tower are plying the waves, it is improving safety and security and training pilots to guide them more skillfully. Under the ground, it is monitoring wear and tear on pipelines and pinpointing problems before they occur. And technology is enabling routing experts to track every one of those millions of barrels of oil or millions of feet of natural gas as they move across the globe to the next destination on their long journey. In the 1940s, custom-built tankers' trucks were the primary means of transporting oil from the site of production to refineries, where it could be refined or shipped to further destination by railroad. Tankers which transport oil have since become increasingly complex, as have the requirements for the operators who drive them. The use of tanker trucks remains a valuable component of the oil supply chain today, though it is no longer the primary means of transporting large volumes of oil. As more oil fields began to be discovered and produced, technological advances also allowed for increasing amounts of oil to be produced from producing reservoirs. Today, over 1 lakh miles of pipeline transferred foreign and domestic crude oil throughout the United States to meet the extensive demand for products such as gasoline and electricity. The business of oil and gas is multifaceted, technically complex, highly capital intensive and often confronted with potential risk and uncertainties. Today's oil companies are dealing with ever-increasing levels of complexity and competition. The innovative technologies in the recovery of oil are also changing the landscape of petroleum industry. Managing international supplies, refining and trading of oil requires several cross-functional skills. Let us now discuss the basic configuration of pipeline. Most people associate pipes with the hot and cold water they see in their houses. Also, most of us will have seen the plastic pipes laid under our streaks and roads to locally distribute natural gas. But what many people do not know is that there are hundreds of thousands of kilometers of very large pipelines crossing our nations and ocean delivering, transmitting huge quantities of crude oil, oil products and gas. Most are undergone or undersea, out of sight, out of mind. Crude oil is often transported between continents in a large tankers, but oil and natural gas is transported, transmitted across continents by pipelines. These pipelines are very large diameters and can be over 1000 km in length. Transmission pipelines are the main arteries of the oil and gas business, working 24 hours per day, 7 days a week, continuously supplying our energy needs. They are critically important to most countries' economies. They have a long history pipelines, have been used to transport liquids and gases for thousands of years. The Chinese used bamboo pipe to transmit natural gas to light their capital, pecking as early as 400 BC. 
The oil and gas are transported in these large transmission pipelines to refineries, power stations, etc. and converted into energy forms such as gasoline for our automobiles and electricity for our homes. Oil and gas provides most of the world with its energy. The fuels providing the world with its primary energy needs are oil is equal to 34%, coal is equal to 24%, gas 21%, nuclear 7%, hydro 2% and other is equal to 12%. Without pipelines, we would not be able to satisfy the huge oil and gas needs of our planet. These pipelines are also very safe forms of transporting energy. Pipelines are 40 times safer than rail tanks and 100 times safer than roll tanks for transporting energy. Oil pipeline spills amount to about 1 gallon per million barrel mills. One barrel transported one mile or 1,609m equals one barrel mile and there are 42 gallons or 159 liters in a barrel. In household terms, this is less than one teaspoon of oil spill per thousand barrel miles. Pipelines of yesterday. Many of the pipelines we use today to transport oil and gas were built many years ago and it is to the credit of those early pipeline engineers that they continue to deliver safe and secure energy supplies today. But we need to go back much further in history to trace the origins of pipelines. For thousands of years, pipelines have been constructed in various parts of the world to convey water for drinking and irrigation for agriculture. These pipes included baked clay and hollow bamboo. The ancient Chinese used bamboo pipes to transport water. There are references to the Egyptians using copper pipe to transport water in 3000 BC and the Greeks used earthenware, lead, bronze and stone pipes from 1600 BC to 300 BC. In that era, blacksmith connected the metal pipes together by simply hammering the red hot ends together. Ancient civilizations such as the Persians and the Romans all used pipes of some type. The first recorded use of a pipe to transport a hydrocarbon was in China about 2,500 years ago. The Chinese used bamboo pipe to transmit natural gas from shallow wells. They could burn it under pans to boil seawater to separate the salt and make the water drinkable. Later records indicate that the Chinese used bamboo pipe wrapped in wax to light the capital Peking as early as 400 BC. In the early 1860s, the oil was transported in wooden barrels on rivers by horse-drawn barges. This was dangerous. Weather and labor disputes often disrupted flow. The railway relieved this, but the oil was now controlled by the rail bosses and their workers, the team star. Pipelines were an obvious solution to this transportation problem, and the early oil workers were familiar with pipes. Cast iron and wrought iron pipes of various diameters were in use around the producing wells from the start of the industry. In 1865, a 6-inch 152 mm diameter gravity no pumps oil line was built in Pennsylvania, USA, transporting 7,000 barrels per day. It was completed by the Pennsylvania Tubing and Transportation company along Pit Hole Creek from the Pit Hole oil field to the mouth of the creek where it flows into the Allegheny River. The next big change in pipeline engineering was the building of long distance large diameter pipelines. These were pioneered in the USA in the 1940s due to the energy demands of the Second World War. During the 1950s and 1960s, thousands of miles of natural gas pipelines were constructed throughout the United States as the demand for this type of energy increased. The Second World War also forced innovation in pipeline technology. 1944, Pluto, the pipeline under the ocean, was commenced. This project was to construct undersea oil pipelines under the English Channel between the England and France to provide vital fuel from Britain to aided forces in France. Pipelines of today. The oil and gas business is big and it is going to become bigger. Consider these facts. The U.S. Energy Information Administration, World Energy, Outlook has predicted fossil fuels will remain the primary sources of energy, meeting more than 90% of the increase in future energy demand. Global oil demand will rise by about 1.6% per year from 75 million of barrels of oil per day, MB by D, in 2000 to 120 MB by D in 2030. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the Supervisory Controlled and Data Acquisition, SCADA. 
SCADE is an acronym for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. SCADA systems are used to monitor and control a plant or equipment in industries such as telecommunication, water and waste control, energy, oil and gas refining and transportation. The system encompasses the transfer of data between a SCADA central host computer and a number of remote terminal units, RTUs, and our programmable logic controllers, PLCs, and the central host and the operator terminals. A SCADA system gathers information such as where a leak on a pipeline has occurred, transfer the information back to a central site, then alerts at the home station that a leak has occurred, carrying out necessary analysis and control, such as determining if the leak is critical and displaying the information in a logical and organized fashion. SCADA system consists of one or more field data interface devices, usually RTUs or PLCs, which interface to field sensing devices and local controls, which interface to field sensing devices and local control switch boxes and valve headquarters. A communication system used to transfer data between field data interface devices and control units and the computers in a SCADA central host. The system can be radio, telephone, cable, satellite, etc., or any combination of these. A central host computer server or servers, sometimes called a SCADA center, master station, or master terminal unit MTU. Field data interface devices. Field data interface devices form are the eyes and ears of a SCADA system devices such as reservoir level meters, water flow meters, valve position, transmitters, temperature transmitters, power consumption meters and pressure meters all provide information that can tell an experienced operator how well a water distribution system is performing. However, before any automation or remote monitoring can be achieved, the information that is passed to and from the field data interface devices must be converted to a form that is compatible with the language of the SCADA system. To achieve this, some form of electronic fields data interface is required RTUs, also known as remote telemetry units, uh, provide this interface SCADA solution for oil and gas, oil and gas SCADA system without having to buy new hardware or control systems. Benefits. Dramatic reductions in the time, effort and cost of integration, easy application creation and ongoing maintenance across remote facilities, substantial increase in the reliability, dependability and stability of the system. Online changes. Once installed changes to the system can be made online without impacting current operation or production quotas. Unlimited scalability. Applications are flexible enough to enable companies to add equipment such as wells or pump stations as expansion dictates while retaining the value of earlier engineering investment and efforts. Performance management. Oil and gas CADA solution have many capabilities that can assist in measuring key performance indicators, KPIs, such as daily production performance, calculation and deliverability calculations for a well, which can improve visibility into the operation's profitability. Let's know the meaning of intelligent pigging. A process which is the act of propelling a properly sized spherical or cylindrical device through the interior of a pipeline by manipulating the pressure and flow of the existing meter or by artificially introduced meter or by mechanically pulling the device through the pipeline for the specific purpose of cleaning, inspecting, distributing inhibitor throughout the pipeline or as a plug to isolate a section of the pipeline. Why is it called picking? The term pick originated in the USA, but why the word was chosen has never been satisfactorily explained. The most widely accepted explanation comes from the screeching sounds made by the early picks as they went through the line. The theory is that two pipelines were standing next to a line where a pick went past pick selection. The type of pick to be used and its optimum configuration for a particular task in a particular pipeline is determined based upon several criteria. This includes the purpose, type, location and volume of the substance to be removed or displaced in conventional picking application, type of information to be gathered from an intelligent pick run, objectives and goals for the pick run. The line contents. The contents of the line while picking, available versus required driving pressure, velocity of the pick. Pipeline cleaning while under operating conditions. A good pipeline integrity program begins with internally cleaning the pipeline. After cleaning and picking procedures have been submitted and accepted, 
NSPEC arrives at the pig launcher with NSPEC cleaning products and high pressure injection equipment. A frack tank is delivered and set in place for storage of NSPEC provided cleaning diluent to blend with NSPEC cleaners. A high pressure hose is run and connected to an NSPEC provided injection manifold located downstream of the pig trap main valve. All safety and environmental cautions are reviewed and implemented. Once the launcher area has been set up, NSPEC locates the customer's pre-marked above-ground marker points and each NSPEC pig tracker is assigned to an AGM location. NSPEC delivers one of its portable high-pressure separators to the pig receiver area for installation. All NSPEC portable separators are ASME coded ANSI 600 series and 1440 PSI rated. Each are capable of processing greater than 200 million standard cubic feet per day. One or more frack tanks are delivered and set next to the NSPEC separator. These frack tanks will later be connected to the separator liquid discharge manifold. The pig receiver trap is prepared for connection to the separator. A spool piece from the kicker valve is removed. NSPEC installs and connects temporary high-pressure hammer-fitting chicks and piping from the kicker valve outlet to the inlet of the portable separator. NSPEC now installs and connects chicks and piping from the separator discharge to a point downstream of the customer's pig receiver. We then connect the separator drain to one of the frack tanks. This frack tank will store received spent liquids and solids dumped from the separator. When the temporary chicks on piping is completed, the customer's gas flow operations will be uninterrupted during the cleaning process. Once all connection at both ends of the pipeline have been installed and checked for leaks, the pipeline is now ready to be cleaned. After closing the launcher main valve, kicker valve, and depressurizing the trap, the door is opened and a planned pig type is inserted into the pig launcher. The trap door is then closed and secured. The trap is purged and pressurized and ready to launch the pig. Implementing the NSPEC cleaning program starts with injecting a calculated volume of NSPEC cleaner and diluent that is based on the diameter and length of the pipeline to be cleaned along with the solution column retention time required to be in contact with the pipe walls. Diesel fuel is usually used as a diluent. However, depending on the cleaning requirements, it can be methanol, MEK, IPA, naphtha, and even water. Recycling and disposal of the cleaning solutions is the responsibility of the customer's environmental group. Once the NSPEC cleaning solution is injected, the solution gathers below ground close to the launcher. The cleaning solution is now ready for the pig to be launched and for it to be gathered up into a column and pushed downstream. A series of launcher valves are opened and the pig is launched. Our typical cleaning pig speeds are between 4 and 8 miles per hour. As the pig gathers the cleaning solution into a column and traverses towards the pig receiver, the cleaning solution penetrates and permeates any solids and oils in the pipeline and suspends them in a liquid froth, enhanced by the use of designed jetting ports through the pig. As the cleaning train continues downstream, the NSPEC cleaning solution increases in solids loading. As the cleaning pig train traverses the pipeline, NSPEC personnel have set up along the pipeline right away at predetermined customer provided AGM points. NSPEC installs in the cleaning pigs an electronic transmitter. NSPEC personnel tracking the pig train can locate the position along the pipeline as it passes their location. A signal is received by the AGM box and each tracker's electronic handheld receiver. NSPEC personnel also record the pig audibly using mechanical listening devices called stereo dual probe geophones.
Once the pig train passes each AGM location, the NSPEC tracker then leapfrogs to the next assigned AGM location sequentially along the pipeline. Monitoring the location of the pig train also allows NSPEC to advise the customer on any pig speed adjustments if required. As the pig train column approaches the receiver, NSPEC throttles the separator discharge gas valve for pig speed control. Notice that the cleaning solution column in front of the pig turns darker, indicating that the cleaning solution is getting dirtier as it gathers more solids and compressor and turbine oils throughout the length of the pipeline. The solids being picked up by the NSPEC cleaning solution should increase on each cleaning run, then gradually decrease on sequential cleaning runs depending on the degree of cleanliness required by the customer. As the now laden cleaning solution approaches the pig receiver, NSPEC personnel throttle the portable separator discharge gas valve to further control the speed of the pig train controlling the liquids into the separator. When the cleaning solution enters the pig receiver, it continues into the portable separator where spent solution and solids are then separated and dumped through the separator drain system into the earlier position frac tank. And then the clean gas is put back into the pipeline system downstream of the pig receiver. Uninterrupted gas service has been maintained throughout this process. NSPEC procedures are repeated until all the cleaning solution and pig are completely received into the pig trap. Once the pig is received, a series of receiver valves are closed to isolate the pig in the pig trap. The pig trap is then depressurized by blowing down the trap through the blow-off valve. With the trap depressurized and all valves tagged and locked out, the trap door is opened and the pig and any remaining solids are removed into a containment pan. The pig trap door is then closed and the receiver is positioned to receive the next cleaning train. Intelligent pigging. Modern intelligent pigs are highly sophisticated instruments that vary in technology and complexity by the intended use and by manufacture. An intelligent pig or smart pig includes electronics and sensors that collect various forms of data during the trip through the pipeline. Hydraulically activated pipeline pigging. Hydraulically activated pipeline pigging, HAPP, is a pigging technology applied for pipeline cleaning. The basic principle is that a pressure drop is created over a bypassable pig held back against a pipeline's fluid flow. The pipeline fluid passing through the pig's cleaning head is accelerated by this pressure drop forming strong cleaning jets. These jets are directed onto the inner wall in front of the pig removing all kinds of deposit. Offshore pipelines. The construction of an offshore pipeline involves several engineering disciplines. Once the need for a new pipeline has been established, the project starts with a design engineer who usually selects a diameter called thickness, steel grade, the method of manufacture, and the method of installation. Offshore platforms and related production system. The development of offshore fields usually involves the construction of a structure of a central location that acts as the gathering and control center for several wells that can be a number of miles away. Such a platform plays several roles. For example, with the advent of a directional drilling, modern platforms are also used to drill into a field. The drill holes spread out radically from the platform, often extending several miles to reach a particular location in the reservoir. The platform houses the hydraulic equipment that provides powers to operate various wells located in trees sitting on top of wells on the sea floor. Transportation of oil, gas by road, railway and marine tankers. Pipelines, marine vessels, tank trucks, rail tank cars and so forth are used to transport crude oils, compressed and liquefied hydrocarbon gases, liquid petroleum products and other chemicals from the point of origin to pipeline terminals, refineries, distributors and consumers. Crude oils and liquid petroleum products are transported, handled and stored in their natural liquid state. Hydrocarbon gases are transported, handled and stored in both the gaseous and liquid states and must be completely confined in pipelines, tanks, cylinders or other containers prior to use. The most important characteristic of liquefied hydrocarbon gases LHGs, is that they are stored, handled and shipped as liquids, taking up a relatively small amount of space and then expanding into a gas when used.
marine tankers and barges. The majority of the world's crude oil is transported by tankers from producing areas such as the Middle East and Africa to refineries in consumer areas such as Europe, Japan and the United States. Oil products were originally transported in large barrels on cargo ships. The first tanker ship which was built in 1886 carried about 2300 SDWT, 2240 pounds per ton of oil. Marine vessel health and safety. In addition to the usual maritime working hazards, transporting crude oil and flammable liquids by marine vessels creates a number of special health, safety, and fire prevention situations. These include surging and expansion of liquid cargo, flammable vapor hazards during transport, and when loading and unloading, possibility of pyrophoric ignition toxic exposures to materials such as hydrogen sulfide and benzene, and safety consideration when venting flushing and cleaning compartments. Fire and explosion protection. Emergency plans and procedures should be developed and implemented that are appropriate for the type of cargo on board and other potential hazards. Firefighting equipment must be supplied. Response team members who have shipboard firefighting, rescue and spill clean up responsibilities should be trained, drilled and equipped to handle potential emergencies. Water, foam, dry chemicals, halogen, carbon dioxide and steam are used as cooling, inhibiting and smothering firefighting agents aboard marine vessels, although halogen is being phased out due to environmental concerns. Confined spaces. Confined spaces on marine vessels such as cargo compartments, pain lockers, pump rooms, or fuel tanks and spaces between double hulls must be treated the same as any confined space for entry, hot work and cold work. Test for oxygen content, flammable vapors and toxic substances in that order must be conducted prior to entering confined spaces. A permit system should be established and followed for all confined space entry safe, cold, work and hot work, which indicate safe exposure levels and required personal and respiratory protective equipment. Toxic exposure. There is an opportunity for vented gases such as a flu gas or hydrogen sulfide to reach the decks of vessels even from specially designed vent systems. Testing should be continuously conducted to determine inert gas levels on all vessels and hydrogen sulfide levels on vessels which contain or previously carried sour crude oil or residual fuel. Tests should be conducted for benzene exposure on vessels carrying crude oil and gasoline, inert gas scrubber, influent water and condensate water is acidic and corrosive. PPE should be used when contact is possible. Motor vehicle and railroad transport of petroleum products, crude oil and petroleum products were initially transported by horse-drawn tank wagons, then by railroad tank cars and finally by motor vehicles. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Transmission pipelines are the main arteries of the oil and gas business working 24 hours per day, 7 days a week, continuously supplying our energy needs. Offshore operations associated with oil and gas exploration and production have blossomed during the last 30 years. Crude oils and liquid petroleum products are transported, handled and stored in their natural liquid state. Transportation of petroleum products by motor vehicles or railroad tank cars is regulated by government agencies throughout most of the world. When loading tank cars and tank trucks, there is always an opportunity for electrostatic charges to be generated by friction as product goes through lines and filters and by splash loading. Switch loading occurs when intermediate or low vapor pressure products such as diesel fuel or fuel oil are loaded into a tank car or tank truck compartment which previously contained a flammable product such as gasoline.